so much in these readings tonight about identity. And you might, uh, some of you might remember the great play, Shakespearean play, The Merchant of Venice. Shakespearean actors love to get the role of Shylock because Shylock, it's like he changes his personality three times during the play. And so an actor gets to act out all these possibilities. That's pretty rare in a play. It shows the talent, the uh, talents of the actor to be able to do that. But we need to understand the identity of Jesus in this case. And so John the Baptist is asking the question, are you the one who is to come? That was a title. There were all kinds of different ideas in Judaism at the time of Jesus about things that were going to change. A lot of people think Judaism at the time of Jesus thought this way. Wrong. <laughs> it thought in a lot of different ways. It's like saying all Christians think X. All Christians don't think much of anything. They think all kinds of different things about all kinds of different stuff. Judaism was no different. So there was a group of Jews that was looking for the Son of Man. Now the Son of Man, they thought, was this person who was going to get super spiritual, souped up powers from God, and he was going to lead a revolution against the Roman Empire, and angels were going to swoop out of the clouds and help them slaughter Romans and all this other great stuff. Then there was a group that was looking for the son of David. The son of David was a descendant of King David who should be on the throne, and when the son of man wiped out all these Romans, and the son of David would get back on the throne of their independent kingdom. So they were looking for that person. Then there were those looking for the son of righteousness. These were the Essenes. They had a separate spirituality. They were really different than most other Jews of the time. Then there were others looking for the one who is to come. This was going to be somebody who lived like a prophet and brought the spirit of prophecy back into Judaism that they thought had died with prophets centuries before. They didn't have it anymore, they thought. But this person would bring it back. So John the Baptist's group was looking for the one who is to come, bring back the spirit of prophecy. And Jesus, knowing all these concepts that are out there about his identity, tells John the Baptist, look back to Isaiah. The spirit of Isaiah the prophet, the ears of the deaf will be open, the tongues of the mute will be free, the lame will walk, all these kinds of things. Jesus names these things, but he adds some stuff. Did you notice that? The dead will be raised. That's not in Isaiah. And the poor have the good news preached to them. That's not in Isaiah either. So Jesus is telling John, I am fulfilling all this prophecy of Isaiah and then some more, John. So I'm more than your concept, even of the one who is to come. There's more to me than that. Sisters and brothers, what about yourselves? If we who are the baptized <coughs> are part of the body of Christ, then how do we make the body of Christ visible in the world today as much as it was 2,000 years ago? I can think of ways, simple ways, I've been able to do it. Years ago I was teaching. I taught a lot of people how to read. It was as if they were blind, but I could teach them how to read and then they could see. They could see that those shapes on a page meant sounds and, and they meant something and you put them together in phonics, and then you make sense out of it, you make a word. It was like a whole world would open up to these people. Wasn't that great? It was wonderful to do that. And many of you taught your children how to read. Wasn't that great? When they begin to put the word together, and it means something, and then the concepts, and then the sentences, and then the paragraphs, it's like, wow, this is really working. Or if some of you work in healthcare, What's it like after surgery and you're helping somebody start to walk again? <laughs> the lame begin to walk. I had surgery back in early November on my shoulder. It was awful. <laughs> but look what I can do now. Yay. I can't do it all yet, but I can do some. <laughs> 
But you see, we do these things, people. I don't, I don't know that we real, realize that we do them. We help so many people in so many ways. We help make the body of Christ real in this world. And to do that, it takes bravery and it takes patience, like we heard in the second reading today. Bravery. We have to be courageous to be Christians in this world. If you haven't figured it out, you better wake up. This is not a world that's dying to hear the Christian message. We need to witness to it nevertheless, and that takes courage. And there's a difference, though, between courage and bravery, but they're both needed. Courage, let me give you an example. Uh, a fireman or firewoman running into a burning building to rescue somebody, that's courage, wow, okay? But patience, that's also needed. Patience then gives the person whose home burned down in the fire a home for six weeks or six months. That's patience. Well, the bravery isn't very helpful without the patience. And the patience has nothing to do without the bravery, you see. They need each other. And so today, as we witness to the life of Christ alive in us, which we are supposed to do, we may be weak at it, but let's keep trying. As we witness to that life, let's do it with bravery and patience. Let's walk in such a way that people recognize that the spirit of prophecy is alive in us. As John's disciples were told about Jesus, the spirit of prophecy was alive in Jesus. It has come to life. But Jesus doesn't stop there. He's more than a prophet. This is why he tells the disciples of John he does more than Isaiah. He is more than that. He understands his identity. Do you make your identity in Christ real? Do you understand it? Do you take it seriously? I'm thinking about it, especially this time of year. As we get ready for the Christmas season, you probably notice the commercial world thinks it's going to be over on December the 26th, right? Mm -hmm. For us, it's just starting on December the 24th. It just starts. How will you make the Christmas season alive? Your identity needs to be different because you are baptized. You are a member of the body of Christ. You need to make that identity real. And how will you do it this coming Christmas season. Make it alive so that people can understand your identity and recognize the life of Christ in you.